Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Because. And up, up first is the Pledge of Allegiance, and it says Mr. Balzarini is going to lead it. But since he's not here, I'm going to pick this young man in the front. Can you come up here and lead us in the pledge? Oh, oh. school. Yeah, it's not says, you, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. coming. Yes. Over here. Oh, everyone's here? Okay, good. Oh, yeah. They wanted to go do some last minute. Super. Okay, so, so we have so Ethan, Tobias, Ella. Okay, so you can lead us all in the pledge. Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Matthew Balzarini. Absent. Colin Clements. Here. Sharon Lampell. Here. Shane Nielsen. Here. David Pombo. Here. Samantha D. Tiberis. Here. And we have our school presentation from Cuesta. Wonderful. Um, we have our leadership students here tonight to present to us. We have some... Well, we'll start with Ella and Sophia, and they'll be presenting. Ethan is joining us, um, and he may chime in from time to time. So thank you for having us tonight. Wait, not yet, not yet, not yet. Hey, go back. Good evening, board members of the Lammersville School District. Principals, vice principals, superintendents, teachers, staff members, parents, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to hear about our presentation about Cuesta Elementary Spring 2016. I am Ella Serino and these are my peer in Cuesta. Our first main event of the year is TV Turnoff Week. This event will take place during March 7th through March 11th. Every day of this week, we'll have a dress-up day, an event that will take place during 6 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Monday, storybook night, teachers will read stories to the students of Quest Elementary. Tuesday, family night game night, food trucks are provided and families can play games and enjoy varieties of food. Wednesday, campfire night, s'mores and hot cocos are provided. Families can sing their favorite songs and enjoy the night. Thursday, ice cream social. A night of relaxing with your friends and family while enjoying ice cream. Friday, spring fling dance. All schools are invited to this dance to show their dance moves. The next upcoming events this spring are Students of the Month Assembly for Citizenship and Perseverance for the month of March and April. Monthly message is a new event that came up last month. Students have a chance to post a message up on a banner every month. Next. Academic teams in Cuesta are doing their best in competitions and practices for pentathlon and science and math Olympiad. We did the spelling bee and Cuesta students made it to the San Joaquin County competition. Daily life in Cuesta. Students are working hard, having fun, and doing their best in school. These following people made a big difference in Cuesta. Credits, elementary, big thanks to Miss Bell, our principal, Miss Duran, our vice principal, teachers, staff. Thank you for listening to our presentation, Pledge of Allegiance. Very nice job, students. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Thank you. And employee recognition, Dr. Nicholas? So I'd uh, like to ask uh, Director Sherburn to come up and introduce uh, our two district coordinators who have a short presentation. Good evening, board members. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Jenna Cook and Brian Gervas, our two um, curriculum coordinators. Um, they have done an amazing job being part of uh, a team and a new office coming in to really try and support uh, the teachers and students within our district. So we want to have them come up and share the accomplishments so far that we've had so you can get a 
Blair for what we have been doing over in that office and, and where we're headed. Good evening. First off, we really want to take the opportunity to thank the board and the superintendent too for recognizing the needs of the district and creating um, not only our two positions but our department um, for curriculum instruction, assessment, and technology integration. Um, the three of us have worked flawlessly together and we enjoy every moment that we get to collaborate and really make a difference within the district. <clears throat> Brian and I have really enjoyed our roles as coordinators um, in supporting teachers, students, and parents. And while we know there's a lot of work still left to do, um, we really relish in the fact that we've, we feel like we've done a lot this school year. And so working with the math guy, we, um, <laughs> we kind of compiled a list of things that we've gotten the privilege of working um, with and doing this school year so far. And so we'll go through them and you'll even notice we have a few numbers in there to kind of quantify some things because you know, sometimes I get told that it doesn't matter unless you can quantify it. So, um, <laughs> so as we look at coaching and, and our role with coaching, we've been able to provide over 60 on-demand coaching sessions um, for teachers, whether that be modeling lessons, planning after school, collaborating and having collaboration meetings, um, as well as facilitating um, Friday um, collaboration meetings. Um, at the beginning of the school year, we also took the opportunity to walk each of our school sites and visit and touch base with all of our new teachers to Lammersville Unified School District and to work with them um, within their technology needs to make sure they have everything that they need to get started and put everything in the right perspective. Um, as pertaining to coaching as well, one of the most influential things within our um, department is working off of feedback from teachers for coaching. So we've sent out approximately 20 different surveys to different audiences asking for feedback that drives reflection and our future decisions. So part of our, one of our biggest roles, of course, is professional development. And uh, you know, just to give you some ideas about some of the things, we've, uh, we've put on 17 professional development sessions this year, uh, just, just in our department. And that might be you know, things that are from half day to full day. And those are things like uh, Canvas, um, the Compass, Compass Learning High School, working with the teachers with rigorous curriculum design, um, rubric work with some of our different teachers, uh, our Aries grade book, and, uh, and definitely our mathematical practices was a big one this year. We had 10 full day professional development sessions this year. You know, if you compare that to you know, where the type of professional development and the, and the length and depth of professional development that was able to be gone in the past, you know, to be able to you know, talk about 10 full day ones already, and that has to do things like cast hand scoring, uh, teacher in service days, and some of the curriculum committee stuff. And we've also had an opportunity to start creating uh, a gigantic um, web, if you will, of, uh, of webisodes, um, screenshots, help guides, things that are very personal to Lambersville. Even though there are a lot of great resources on the web, uh, we've been able to do a lot of uh, personal things that help out some of our teachers. Um, as we look at our role within curriculum development, and obviously that's going to expand greatly as we look at a potential English language arts adoption. Um, but in the beginning of the school year, we had the opportunity to meet um, with 14, well, 14 different meetings with our RCD leads, looking at um, the development of units and continued development of the RCD kind of 1.0 version. That's now transforming into um, listening to feedback on those units. And now we are working on um, unit improvement and assessment in the RCD 2.0 model, where we're aligning and reworking our K through 8 math units for the 16-17 school year. Um, we've also had the privilege of working directly with our transitional kindergarten and music departments to help create district consistency on policies, procedures, and best practices. And we really enjoy the fact that we get to work with our partnerships with the counties and other export resources out there to bring information back to our district and make sure that we're at the forefront of everything that we need to within our education field. Certainly our, our parent and community research, our outreach is a big part for us. We've, uh, we've had six different parent parent workshops during the year with over 120 parents in, in uh, attendance to those. Um, those. Those had things like the math practices, um, some of our digital library things, um, our, our curriculum workshop, Canvas, how do you, and how, what that looks like for students. Uh, we've, we've created 13 webisodes for parents that have gone out during this year. And we've also uh, been a big part of having a curriculum panel of, uh, of parent input for a lot of our meetings. 
So as we talk about all the different audiences that we work with, um, a lot of those consist of within different committees. Um, and we get a chance to work with a lot of stakeholders within Lammersville, um, within the committees of um, DAC, PLC, GATE, um, Admin Forum, our curriculum committees, and then Next Generation Science Standards. And we really look forward to the development of those committees because it really allows us to get feedback in a way that is so personal and meets the needs of their individual um, perspectives of that committee. And so on top of the technology things that I think most people associate with this job, I mean, there are, there are, there are uh, a countless number of programs that are going on, and not, and not just some technology programs. Like, we, you know, to our count, there are 14 different technology programs that we currently have in action in the district, things like Compass and Canvas and Illuminate and CalPads and CASP and the Digital Library and Interim Assessments and ARIES. I've got to read about these, yeah. And BITSA support and uh, RCD. Uh, you know, there's this, you know, uh, there's a, this is a wide variety of those things, um, and we, you know, we uh, we also coordinate and help our. our we have site techs that that are that, that have a role in our building, so we coordinate and help uh, those site techs be a, uh, an important part of their building and make sure that they they fit in well. Um, we uh, coordinate their assessment, you know, you know by meaning that we're uh, we're pulling data or we're part of the you know the, the team that's if we're now that we have so many good tools at our disposal like a map like uh, interim assessments right we're being we're a big part of helping helping teachers and and. Uh, site admin pull that data to be able to be used in a meaningful way. We have 25 teachers right now that are in our BITSA program, our beginning teachers uh, program, and you know that's a, that also falls under our category of oh, there it is right there. Right there. That's perfect, <laughs> perfect timing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and on top of those things that are, are are in place, we have four different programs that we currently started piloting this year. Right as we start to look forward into the next into the next um, year and, and forward. So we. Uh, you know, this is this is what this is what, uh, what what Jen and I have done this year, and and you know I'm a numbers guy, and so I did a just a just a a, a, a very inaccurate, but I think but I think pretty close to um, pretty close to count up, and I, I would say we're very very close to probably about a thousand hours of of direct contact with teachers this year, and when you think about the. What's like like I said about where Lammersville was last year and all the great things that were going on that continue to still go on this year and on top of those you know the the, the, ne the next thousand hours of of, uh, of direct teacher at time it's been uh, it's, it's it's been exciting you know and, and like Jenna said at the beginning we really appreciate the the board and the superintendent's vision uh, about about bringing our department together and certainly Heather has been a, has been an awesome uh, director for us I think we all have an awesome vision of what this looks like. And it's uh, and we just you know we, we can't uh, be more excited about, about what's in our future. So and thank a great you. Great journey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you very much. So uh, when you uh, create a new um, uh, department um, and it's a big idea, and then you hear things like a thousand hours of individual teacher contact and all the different programs. Uh, it's the people who put the work in and the hard hours and the focus and the, and the journey. Uh, so we have a, an acknowledgement um, to do for Brian and Jenna for their efforts. So um, I have to say that in this is my 28th year as an educator, and I cannot say that I have ever worked with um, coordinators or staff underneath me who have surpassed what Brian and Jenna do. They are amazing coordinators. Um, we really work super well together. They are incredibly dedicated and smart and articulate and um, well received by all of their peers. And I just think that they have done an amazing job thus far. And I'm really excited and privileged to work with them. So we wanted to show our appreciation. So if I could have the board come down, we'd like to uh, give a certificate of recognition to Jenna and Brian um, for uh, fulfilling a dream of a big idea and making it reality. And, how, and in the end at, of all that work is uh, we're helping kids. And I, say something real absolutely. Quick when you're done. Just, just to add real quick to the accolades that have been given, I've had an opportunity to attend a few presentations and events hosted by 
both of these individuals. And if nothing else, I want to compliment you both for just the energy that you bring to what you do, because it's one thing to do a job. It's another thing to come with the energy and the enthusiasm that the two of you bring to every meeting I've been to. I mean, Brian, I sat through one of the sessions you did early on for what the computer-based learning was going to be and watched you get grilled and stand there with a smile on your face like, no, 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 wait, let me explain, let me explain. And that energy, that positive atmosphere uh, that, that you exuded during those meetings, that meetings and the other ones that I've attended with both of you, uh, is is something that I appreciate that I hope that the public and that the teachers and the staff appreciate, but that I very much appreciate and recognize and thank you both for. I'd like to also thank you. The only quantifiers you used were about parents and teachers, and that's all for the kids. That tells us where your focus is. Thank you. And, and I would just like to compliment all of both of them as well as Director Sherburn. I've been to many, many presentations that they've given, and they're always professional. They give, make good presentations. They field questions really well. They don't always know the answer, but they're well prepared, and when they don't know the answer, they let people know, I'm not sure what the answer to that is, but I'll find out, and I appreciate all of that. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on, uh, item six, approval or corrections to the agenda? There are none. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. With one absent. Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. We'll start with facilities use committee. I was absent, so Mr. Pombo? Um, I gave a report at our last board meeting. We haven't had... I think since, a, right? Okay. okay, so we just have the minutes in here from the last meeting, and that's, that's it. Correct. Okay, all right. And the next meeting is, I believe on the calendar, is it not? Tuesday, next week. The agenda should hopefully go out for folks on Friday. Uh, district Advisory Committee. The District Advisory Committee met on Monday, February 29th. During this meeting, we reviewed the budget for the upcoming school years with a focus on the potential impacts of the STRS obligations, as well as potential impacts if Proposition 30 is not extended, um, so that mem you know additional members of the public sees that you know is aware of that impact um, on the district. We also reviewed career career technical education program and the di direction we're moving with that, and also the 20th 21st century learning with a focus on the differences and commonalities between technology integration versus blended learning. We also discussed the fa fact that the upcoming LCAP will be much more simplified, so I wanted to make the board aware of what's going on. Um, it's going to be much more simplified when compared with our previous LCAP. This is based on feedback from the state and county levels, but I wanted to point out um, to the rest of the board two things. First, the level of detail pr um, included in our previous LCAP was based upon direction from the state and county level. At first, the direction from above was that they wanted to see accountability plan that addressed all of the various high and medium priority areas for the district. However, it is a truism that in leading a large organization like a school district, if you set out to create a plan that addresses everything, you end up with a plan that is confusing and makes it difficult to effectively address hardly anything. So I kind of liken it to Hewlett Packard's um, uh, business motto in the 80s, prioritize, focus, win, which meant prioritize your various goals and then focus in on a few key goals and then, you know, uh, focus in on them and you will succeed rather than when you try to accomplish everything, you really don't end up accomplishing anything. Um, so based on feedback from various entities, which includes members of our own board, um, the direction from the state and local levels has changed to incorporate this mindset. So you can expect to see a much more condensed LCAP this year um, compared with last year, but that is by design. That's it. Thank you. So then we'll move on to uh, the DLAC committee. Any comments from Ms. Van Pelt? We have. No meetings? We have not met since the last board meeting. A good oak. Um, gate, art, and music. Gates tomorrow, right? Yeah. We have a meeting tomorrow night. Yeah. So, and safety and crisis response. Mr. Balzarini's not here. Did he have a report? None. Okay. And then wellness committee, Mr. Pombo. 
Uh, we have not had a meeting since our last board meeting. Our next meeting is next Wednesday, and I will have a report after that. We did have a, um, a health fair that ran in, con in conjunction with the district um, recruitment fair, and I thought it went fairly well. Okay. Then moving on, item eight, governing board reports. So for my governing board report tonight, I'd like to briefly talk about my experience this year as a student board member. Sitting up here twice a month has definitely taught me so much. I've gotten to learn about how the student government works, um, understand how LUSD operates, and gain the knowledge as to what is going on right around me in my own school system. With that being said, I have decided to run in the upcoming ASB election for the MHHS Academics Commissioner of the 2016-2017 school year. And, of course, that's in the event that I'm reselected for their leadership program. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you. Good luck indeed. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Clements. Um, I will be volunteering at uh, Mountain House High School's emergency preparedness drill. Um, I did register for that. Um, I'm also registered to attend CSBA's Legislative Action Day on March 15th, so I'll be in Sacramento the entire day for that. Um, I attended... Um, LUSD's employment fair as well as the LUSD health fair on Saturday, February 20th. Um, I focused my attendance at the um, employment fair on existing employees because I believe that if it was properly done, this event could serve two purposes. First, it could really aid in attracting the talent that we are looking for, um, which was obviously the purpose of the, uh, the event. But second, given the district's efforts to improve the morale of certified and classified staffs, I wanted to make sure that our existing employees perceive the event as evidence that the district is doing everything in our power to attract and retain the necessary talent. I had the opportunity to speak with a number of team members that were representing LUSD at the employment fair. This included special education, multiple subject instruction, food service, and the custodial staff. Um, the employees I spoke with reported that the fair was well run and attended, and they were pleased with both the quantity and the quality of the personnel that they were getting to speak with. Um, as it relates to running the event, I wanted to give kudos to the team for thinking ahead and creating a process where candidates could be interviewed by the appropriate personnel so that conditional offer letters could actually be handed out on site. Um, and to you know to qualified candidates subject of course to the appropriate reference and background checks obviously this one event is not in and of itself a strategy for enhancing employee morale it is just one of the many things that we're doing to try to focus on the issue and improve um, the quality of life and the morale of classified and certified staff throughout the district um, I also attended the girls uh, varsity basketball team's first playoff game on Friday February 19th I was very proud of our Lady Mustangs. Um, it was a great game, exciting to watch. The girls won. I wasn't, I was out of town, so I didn't get to see the next one, um, which was the following Tuesday, I believe. Um, but a lot of stuff going on in the district. Um, that's the, that's it for me. Um, I won't go over everything. Uh, Director Clements went over as far as the, uh, Health and Recruitment Fair, I was there as well. I thought it was very well attended, and I thought it was extremely successful for being our our uh, first try out of the gate for such a thing, and seemed to be run very, very well from, be from beginning to end. I also was at the girls' playoff basketball game, first playoff game ever for Mountain House High School, <laughs> which was great. And I had a very very exciting game. Um, I also attended the parent meeting on curriculum adoption at the high school. There was around 40 to 50 parents present. Um, I thought there was a very informative explanation given of where the, where the district is in curriculum adoption and how we will proceed. There were some very good questions asked by parents in attendance and staff were able to respond with helpful answers. I think everyone came away with a better understanding of how the process has worked and is working. That's it. Ms. Lampel? I also attended the recruitment fair. 
you would never know it was our first ever fair. It was so well organized. It was so impressive. It reminded me of the very large fairs that I have attended around the state. The staff, while everything was organized so well, the staff was still flexible to notice things that need to be changed and change them on the spot for the better. Um, the response, the people applying for jobs, showed the desire of the public to work in our community. The word is out there that there's great stuff going on here and people want to work here. I had somebody who was working for me in my home district as a substitute and he called me and said, I want to work in Lammersville. Okay, talk to Ben. <laughs> um, so the, the word is out there, it really is. Uh, the health fair was very well organized but it wound up to be a little windy <laughs> I went to talk to the chiropractors and the wind, they were so cold that the tears were running down their face. <laughs> but they were troopers. They stood there and it was absolutely amazing. I also attended the girls' softball scrimmage the other day because they were playing against the Lady Hawks of Delhi. <laughs> so I went from one side to the other side, from one side to the other side. Um, our, our Lady Mustangs are growing as a team, and regardless of how they played, their sportsmanship and their spirit was phenomenal. And I do have to say that I was proud of our Lady Hawks for their sportsmanship as well. So, and unfortunately, I will not make it to tomorrow's gate meeting, so if someone else can report at the next board meeting. I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Is it? Yep. Okay, super. And uh, I will, as my report, give the briefest report I've ever given for purely selfish and personal reasons. I was unable to attend any events for the last two weeks. Um, however, that chapter is over, and um, <laughs> I will be far more active into the future for the next uh, few months. But uh, I don't I, think that was selfish. I, I, the <laughs> purely personal reasons, and, and again, selfish for me, but that's okay. So... Um, um, all of us are sure that your endeavors were successful. <laughs> Let's hope Shane. so. So, um, and with that, we'll go ahead and move on to public comments. Do we have any cards at this time? Unless you have something that you'd like to speak to on the agenda, this is your opportunity to address the board. Okay. Moving on then, item 10, consent items for consideration. And I do believe, in addition to the listed items, uh, Alvina, do you want to address uh, item B3? <coughs> Introduce. I would like... James, Jimmy, we call him Jimmy Legrand to stand. He is our Director of Maintenance, Operations, and Transportation. I am so excited he's here. Um, he's, <laughs> oh, I couldn't tell you how excited I am. Um, he's been here eight days now, and it was very exciting. On his first day, we toured the high school, and just the, the look on his face made me feel good. Um, he was touching the walls and the doors and the baseboards. This is beautiful. <laughs> and so I, you know, nice you school. vow to keep our facilities in great shape. <laughs> we made him take an oath, right? <laughs> we made him take an oath. Yes. And so I, you know, under the, the maintenance report, I'll give some more items of some great. projects he's Excellent. already started on. So um, welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome Mr. LeGrand. <laughs> so I'll yes. move for approval of consent items as presented. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none, one absent. Motion carries. So I'd like to welcome Jasmine Aguilar, elementary office supervisor. Oh boy. Harold Allen Boyogan, district courier. Do you go by Jimmy? Yes, ma'am. Jimmy Legrand, director of maintenance operations and transportation. And Ariel Merrill, district receptionist, administrative secretary. So welcome all of them to our Lammersville family. Welcome, welcome all. Welcome to all. District administrative reports, Dr. Nicholas. Oh, yeah, and absolutely. I'm, I apologize. Guys, if you have better things to do than just listen to us prattle on, you don't have to stay. Absolutely. I apologize. I should have released... I should have let Thanks you know for joining us, You don't students. have to stay and listen to us. Yes, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great evening. Thank you. Not a problem. Not a problem. Moving along. Okay, so um, I, it's my pleasure to uh, present that's coming up on the screen here, um, the metrics that go with our successful recruitment fair. So, um, again, uh, the lead of that was Dr. Gill. 
Um, her hard work and leadership was incredibly important to the success of the event. Also, Athena Rios and Jennifer Lanza uh, in coordinating all of this. So the pictures speak a thousand words, so I'll just talk about um, the numbers. So the pre-registrations numbered at 570 um, participants. Um, the actual applications that were processed was 361 individual um, applications. Uh, screening and interviewed. Uh, we had screened out prior to interviews 91 people. Total first interviews, because it was a two-interview format, 230 candidates were interviewed session one. If they were moved forward, um, there was an additional interview, and that was 143 candidates. Out of that pool, we already have approved 115 people to provide substitute services, both in certificated and classified. But I want to point out that the pictures in the, on that page are people waiting to be interviewed. The bottom left one are the first interviews, and the second one uh, is, is moving into the second interviews. Um, it almost looks like an airplane in there. <laughs> So future hires. Also, um, part of selling the, the community, the school, Mountain House, Lammersville Unified, uh, everybody left with a commemorative cup with Lammersville on it. Uh, and uh, so we were able to, in one day, uh, have provisional contracts signed for 19 certificated people, 10 classified, and we have a pile of applicants, uh, 43, who we are going to actively pursue when the timing is appropriate. So um, for a district of our size to have so many hundreds of people show up really does speak to what Trustee Lampel said, which is people are hungry to work in our district. That's spectacular. That really is. It is It is very spectacular. You know, I've been doing HR for a long time, and I say that over and over again, and I only have one word for all of this, and it's wow. <laughs> Those are very impressive numbers. Yes. Thank you to everyone for all of your efforts. Yes, thank so, you. So uh, because I'm talking, the compu Noel's computer has broke. But um, so that may be the presentation, even though there's a couple of other <laughs> slides, but we're going to buy a little time um, talking about the importance of technology and the ability to adjust <laughs> when it doesn't work appropriately. And, and the importance um, of flexibility when flexibility. the technology goes down. <laughs> um, but I do I, that also also the point of uh, there was a health fair and um, and we had, uh, you know, community people come out and we. Um, it was it was it was one of those things that was so excuse me so successful that the people who were working were smiling and beaming because it had that wow vibe. So we had a health fair and entertainment, uh, food trucks and and all kinds of goodies. Our cheer squad came out and cheered, um, and it really not only was a a, a showcase for um, our district but our community as well. Oh, and we had a video of our kids cheering, but we're going to skip it because it seems to be causing the tech no problem. They were great. I watched them. They were them. great. <laughs> okay, so, so to, to conclude, um, our <laughs> HR department um, is going to go through the screening process. Ed Join's going to get involved, official, all the paperwork, screening, second interviews, reference checks, all of that stuff. But we do have um, a, a large number of people we intend to hire, and we are significantly ahead of our curve um, of, of identifying talented people who uh, have a great desire to work in our community and uh, with our kids. Thank you for that reporting. That okay. information was great, by the way. I well, it's uh, when you're in a crowd, it's hard to get a number, but those are that's just un unbelievable. So the team that put it together. Um, but I also want to say that we had every principal, AP, every director, um, all the district office staff. These three wonderful ladies here are in, in the picture that just showed up. Um, everybody put heart and soul into this. So what when 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 the community, like I, I've said before, when when everybody comes together for a cause, the cause happens. And so uh, we prove once again that there's a special energy and vibe about people in this community and the people who work here. And I think the, the picture of those three ladies said, say it all. So our goal is to hire as many talented, wonderful people in our district. And um, that is the final slide. Okay. Second, um, it's important I'm going to announce this again, but it, it goes in context with a number of presentations. Uh, the next two pieces of information have to do with neighborhood D. 
Neighborhood D, for anyone in the community that's not aware, sits to the southeast of our high school. Um, we have been asked to name the school, which is the first step to developing the community. We've, we've announced that um, at the previous board meeting. But now I need to announce that uh, uh, two days ago we were asked or informed that the, the temporary road that is called Tradition that runs south from Mustang Way down towards uh, Grantline Road is going to be closed because they are bringing in earth-moving equipment and they are going to start to prepare uh, the land there to develop. So not only do we have massive number of houses being built in neighborhood C or Hanson Village, but now the village known as D, and we'll have a new school name, um, is also being developed. So uh, I believe the total number of houses in neighborhood D range around 1,000. Um, so, uh, and there's already 350 permits or houses in Hanson Village, and they're around 1,100 houses. So at the current pace, neighborhood C should finish in the next couple of years, and um, if that's how they build them, and neighborhood D will be moving along just like uh, Hanson did. So uh, the date started on March 16th, but I believe we've moved the date where tradition's going to be closed off. It's going to be the between the 17th and the 22nd, more towards the 22nd. So anybody who's been using that as a slingshot backdoor um, is probably oh, is definitely not going to be able to use it. But the, 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 for the community, um, that's, that's a major, major um, development. So that's the one that goes past the firehouse to Correct. the back entrance to the parking Correct. lot? Okay. And how long are they proposing to have it closed? So that question has been posed, and I haven't heard an answer. Um, but that, that's going to go all the way through is what I've been told. I would guess all of 2016 at a minimum. And I, I will be able to let you know. I'm not sure that, it, that I find that acceptable to have that access to the high school and blocked off. What, what, what kind of traffic does that see on a regular day? I'm guessing a lot because the front, you have to go up and past, and the back one tends to be I so. I think maybe the, maybe the developer has to come up with a, with a plan B. Yeah, can, we, can we invite someone from the developer to the next meeting to talk to I us about? I would be happy to uh, invite a traffic Sergeant. mitigation yes. plan. To build their own road. So I would guess, I don't even want to guess, but I, my thought would be, um, they, the, I know the plan is to move it all the way through, that it's going to be an access point. Um, so I will have to ask those questions. I'll invite Mr. Sargent, and he can, he can get more into the details. But I think the concern all of us have is that's the only current access to Neighborhood D, meaning if they're going to be using it for massive earth-moving equipment and close it off for the better part of a calendar year. If I'm wrong and it's a few weeks, then that's one thing. But if our site administrator hasn't been informed how long he's going to lose a large percentage of the access to a school, I would think the developers, it's incumbent upon them to communicate so he was informed about 15 minutes after I was. And that's what I'm saying. That <laughs> everybody appears to be uh, on the same page, which is unfortunately there's an entity in this community that doesn't feel they need to communicate with the, the people who are impacted by their decisions. So I'd really love them to come to the next meeting to discuss that with us. Okay, so Alvina has looked up, um, and it looks like it's March to July um, is the window of time that that part would be closed off. Uh, so we'll have Mr. Sargent show up. We'll have a further conversation with it. I'd appreciate that. Okay. I think we all would. Um, the other announcement is... Uh, Clemson, it's not a big yeah. deal, but, but, the, but I'm just going to say I want to hear him say it here in front of us. Yeah. So to Internet, July... Publicly. I'll believe to July when I actually see it. And I'm <laughs> just going to agree with her. He didn't say what to year. Be open when we open school in August. Especially with the amount of... Oh, ifs, ifs ands, or buts. Yes. It's going to be a lot of kids next year. You. It's going to be a very busy... And school remember, we'll have a full 250 mm -hmm. to 300 kids senior class, so 1,100 kids. So a lot yeah. more cars going into the school starting next year, so... Ben's sweating. His, yeah, his tension <laughs> is palpable, so... Okay. So a um, couple more items, just short ones. Sure. Um, so the, the board asked that we wor work on a grant writing committee. I wanted to announce to the board when with, to get further mm -hmm. direction, but I've asked that Dr. Gill um, head up a grant writing committee. Um, the recommendation from staff would be that we add it to um, the list of committees uh, in the com for the committee reports and maybe take one of the committees and reduce it from a two board member group and have that one person slide uh, to the grant writing committee. 
So that's a recommendation. We can talk about it further, but I did want to let you know that staff had uh, followed through on that. And I know that we've communicated to some of the people who were interested in helping in the community. And so that would be ready to go um, once we just solidify that. Have we talked about steps for the naming of um, Neighborhood D? Yeah, we, gonna... we haven't. Actually, there's a really interesting folder in my office. So um, there is a, a set of board minutes that are, hand, are typed on a manual typewriter. So the, 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 the thing goes that far back. <laughs> um, there are some, dis some communities, schools that have been named and, and some that have not. And then there's a list of recommended names. The most interesting was Oppenheimer and yes. Don Quixote. Yes. So, um, I, you know, the guy that invented the atomic bomb and um, uh, a Dulcinea and a horse. Well, tilting at right? windmills is kind of... Yeah, <laughs> were those <laughs> recommended or were those actual? I believe there was a study outreach that that list came from, but there are some other names with historic figures and other things. But I thought uh, for the sake of the presentation tonight, I'd bring up those two. Are we having a committee or a group that we're going to... Yeah, so there's a process. We've contacted Mr. Uh, Sargent, um, and there's a date set up with the kind of same kind of people that sat on it last time. Okay, cool. Um, and we'll come forward with a name probably in the next two, maybe uh, the, probably in the April meeting. Okay. And finally, um, the posters around the room are, are were worked on at the DAC meeting, but each color represents a different organization, group, or committee that has worked on a project with our Ed Services team about um, uh, uh, just a general question, which is, what does a 21st century classroom look like in Lammersville Unified School District? And the reason why that's important is uh, the LCAP, LCFF, Common Core, College and Careers, it's all wrapped around this 21st century uh, model. So we've gone out to a number of different constituent groups, run a, run a short version at the DAC meeting and very long versions at the curriculum committee meetings of just getting people's general idea of what does that look like? What do you, what, and, and there's multiple factors. So um, I want to compliment the team and all the participants in the different committees, but that information will be pooled together so we can come up with one general after reaching out to these different groups, this is kind of the general consensus of Lammersville Unified's version of a 21st century um, classroom. And um, if, at the end of the meeting, if you'd like to walk around and see what people um, put down, that's great. Um, you're welcome to do so. And with that, I close out my uh, report. Thank you, Dr. Nicholas. And then district maintenance and operations report. Will this be your last report? And then we'll start I'm getting I'm not some... sure. I'm trying to decide. He might definitely <laughs> do a better job at it than I will. I don't know. <laughs> so I, you know, I've been with the district almost 10 years. And watching some of the processes change, um, some of the length of time of things that are, that are normally done at the district, one of them being uh, we're a member of a consortium uh, through Keenan, the county office, for workers' comp and property and liability. And a couple of the things that they have provided services is the hazardous inventory material and also what they call an NCR um, relief, Northern California relief, um, loss control, um, which used to take maybe when I first started here an afternoon, then a day. And then when Jimmy came on board and they reached out about doing the walk around the district, they scheduled two full days. And I thought, well, I guess it probably would take that long. They go through classrooms. They make sure they don't have um, furniture that's flammable. Um, they recommend not having the coffee pots and the microwaves in the classroom. So all this stuff is documented in this report, and it occurred to me, We've never shared that report with the board, so I would be very interested. They're coming out in March, um, possibly sharing that at a future um, in a board packet because it's pretty extensive. They take pictures. They show where the, you know, something could happen, so tripping hazards. They look at playground equipment. So it's, it's, it, it just occurred to me when I saw two full days that they were, that it's necessary. And I'm glad that Jimmy is here to walk with them and not me. So, <laughs> <laughs> he can so spend I'm, those two days. Uh, yes, <laughs> they've been out, but yeah, it's 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 nice. And then also, you know, he's taking care of uh, uh, getting quotes for the developer fees have changed. So we obviously have to go through a process there, so we can charge more per square footage for the community that's outside outside of Mountain House, but still within the district. And then also, we're changing the mitigation fee. That's a little bit easier to do. So we'll probably start um, increasing those per square footage in a couple of weeks. 
Um, I also have connected him with Wesley King so they can review any of the outstanding warrant, warranty tickets that we have. And lastly, we're doing some work over at Bethany on the field. Um, so you'll be seeing that in a future consent packet because it's below the threshold. Um, I, I don't know if Dr. Nicholas wants to add to that Bethany field, the, the baseball, the JV team is needing to, you know, we need the space. Um, I'm looking around. I, we're going to fix the field up. It's going to be a nice ballpark. <laughs> <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> are we, are we looking you. at all of Bethany's fields and not just the baseball field? No, it's because... just the, the baseball section right now. Okay. But obviously after the we rain comes and goes, left. we'll probably, and Jimmy's here to do further evaluations and make some recommendations for, okay. for it's, we, we, we're very fortunate to have the campuses that we do have. Yes. Um, yes. So I learned of something last week that does fall under facilities. It's, Jimmy probably knows about it. It's a new requirement of staff to have to be trained on pesticides. Now, not the, not the big one that um, the maintenance folks have to go to. If a teacher is using Clorox wipes in their classroom, that is a pesticide. And that'll probably and they fall have to go through right. an online training through Sacramento State. I did it last night. Drink a lot of coffee. Oh, wow. It's really boring. It's an hour, and then there's a quiz. Thank you. In order to use <laughs> Clorox wipes? They are considered a pesticide. What is the number called? Some kind of pesticide number. A lot of the products that you use um, are considered pesticides, and you don't think they're pesticides. Because, you know, in I Sacramento, they don't have better to things to do. attention to it and learn something. Yeah. Right? They yeah. don't have better things to do in Sacramento than to start talking about, yeah. you know, what wipes the teachers and, mm -hmm. and parents and students might be using in a classroom? Something of uh, the Hold maintenance and recommendations for it's part of the Healthy Schools mm -hmm. um, Act, and their recommendation after an hour of trying to stay awake is use soap and water and plug up the holes. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to go through the hour-long training and take the little uh, quiz. <laughs> I'll get you the information. Thank on you. It. <laughs> I'm sure Keenan will send you something because I got it from our insurance. And I'm sure group. when they come out to do the hazardous materials inventory, that that will be a topic. Okay then. Yeah. Okay then. Excellent. Thank State you. Of California. Welcome to California. Yeah, that was my last night. It was boring. <laughs> Action items: Item A, consider for approval 2015-16 inter-district transfer request. Report. No report. Move to approve updated 2015-16 inter-district transfer request. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. With one absent, motion carries. Item B, consider for approval 1617 inter district transfer requests. Move to approve the 2016 17 inter district transfer request. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. With one absent, motion carries. Item C, consider for approval the amended. 2016-17 instructional calendar, and it's my understanding there were two changes from the packet that went out to uh, everyone on Friday. One, the quarter end for the first quarter at the high school was moved up a week just to try to balance things out to make it more quarterly. Mm -hmm. And um, the a couple of the early release dates for the high school were moved just to kind of conform to that as well as my understanding. So those were the only minor changes. Did LTA have input to the calendar? Uh, they they've uh, approved this calendar and we with this change uh, as a courtesy we let both the unions know um, that, that we made this change not affecting the negotiation responsibilities so neither CSEA nor LTA had significant issues with, with we've been working on this with with them for um, a better <laughs> part of them over a month but yeah. it wasn't like we gave them the calendar we discussed with them what the calendar was right. and it kind of all came to in a fact consensus. there were two options they voted on two this is LTAs um, there were two options they want they brought forward to their their constituents and they voted on option two this is option two um, CSEA usually says give us the calendar tell us when to be at work and we'll be there <laughs> <laughs> I know but I I wanted to ask right <laughs> there were um, it does just as a point of information not that it's necessary, but does this dovetail with Tracy Unified's calendar as well, or no? I haven't okay. seen it. All right, I, I was just curious. I don't even know if theirs was on the agenda yet. So. What, what I can say is we did add an additional PD day um, in the summer uh, with a textbook adoption uh, coming forward. We wanted to have two full days for people to uh, get some training um, to help support 
a stronger launch. Okay. Can I have a motion? I move to approve the 2016-17 instructional calendar as amended from the original board packet. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. One absent. Motion carries. Uh, item D, consider for approval amendment number five to the facilities use handbook. Report. When we met, um, we tried to come up with some of the reasons why the amount of staff hours was being put into facility use. And we found that there were many um, organizations that had multiple users that were going in and, and putting in requests, and then Lori was having to track work with different people. So one of the recommendations that we brought forward was that we reduce the number of people that were per organization. Um, I'm hoping that that will help bring down the amount of time that she spends on it. We identified some other areas, but this is one of them that we think that would help. Um, and even at the school site level, having one point of contact um, rather than multiple points of contact, um, because it's, it's even getting difficult just searching mm -hmm. By because it, they're assigned multiple users and the software doesn't work that way by combining them all. Mm -hmm. So we think that this would be a, a, a perfect recommendation to um, put into place. Yeah, it was part of the meeting where we were discussing this and looking at the list of people and seeing six or seven names as authorized people to schedule events for each entity was getting out of hand because then there had to be a verification that they had the paperwork, they had the mm -hmm. process. So. Our position was, if you're an entity, whether you're a school site, whether you're a foundation, whatever, you've got your username and password, you can share it within your organization for this purpose. You don't need to have seven different people log in to, to create events. And, and the gentleman from the software company was there explaining that's what most folks do, and it does really help narrow down and reduce the time that, that folks would be dealing with it. So. And I know that we'll be, we have our facility use meeting on Tuesday, and Jimmy Legrand has been using actually that, this particular software and is very familiar with the facility use process um, at the district. So I'm hoping he'll bring forward some recommendations. I've had him go through the handbook um, to find out maybe what it is that we're doing that's causing us. Because we, as we know, we took Tracy's and tried to mold it to, to suit us, but I'm, there's just so many different things that are probably causing us to have more um, problems, and we need to kind of try to resolve that. So, move to approve amendment number five to the 2015-16 facilities use rental handbook. Second. Any further discussion? Yes. So there was something, I don't know if it was in the amendment or in the minutes, about food service employees being hired for every event. Um, where they have requested use of the kitchen, mm -hmm. and I think it was specifically about the high school. And I feel very, very strongly that food service employees must mm -hmm. be hired for every event which any of our kitchens mm -hmm. are used. We have to protect our facilities, and while folks don't purposely damage mm -hmm. our stuff, they don't know how to use it. That's exactly this is industrial it. machinery. Right. So I, I feel very strongly that okay. we need to write that in. Um, just my own opinion from experience. Because um, even if they're not using the equipment, they may be touching the equipment. Yeah, yeah. So with that, let's recommend, uh, see if we can get um, Ms. Hill to okay. attend our meeting to discuss that so we can look that section over, have her bring forward any concerns she may have to the committee and look to make those changes. She would agree with oh, I, I know what she's <laughs> she going to say, but I want to invite her participation. So. And there was another piece that, we, that was in there when we were looking at the amendments last year, I brought up a concern about the 30-day moratorium at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And I made a couple of suggestions, mm -hmm. and I was told we're going to come back to it. Yes. I still don't see it, and I don't think the 30-day moratorium um, on the community's use of our facilities is reasonable. Mm -hmm. And the reason I was given was because the school principals have not set their calendars yet. We talked about maybe having the first month of school mm -hmm. set when they leave in June. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Um, because I, I think it's hurting our community activities mm -hmm. to have that moratorium. So I just, I'm watching for that to change. Right, and I one of the... It's only the beginning of March. Yes, and one of the recommendations was to have the handbook approved before the school year was out. 
that would include that information. So it's right around the corner. You're right, April. <laughs> and Alvina and I have been talking about this board's shared concern with that issue. And um, I, as a member of the committee, would say you can expect to see it with a recommendation in the very near future because I, I, I heartily agree with you. At some point, we have to recognize as much as there are facilities there is a need out there and we are the mm -hmm. only game in town yes. we have to recognize that we have to find a way to get this done and there's but there's got to be a process on the back side of it too and the problem is right now the front side of the moratorium and the back side of once you've given dates what happens then there's got to be a focus on both of those pieces and the committee Elvina and i were just talking about that before the meeting that's one of the big ticket items that's going to be on one of our next two mm -hmm. uh, committee agendas Thank so. you. I just wanted to make sure the concept didn't die because, as you said, no. we are the only no, town. No, ma'am. No, I, I promise If we weren't, you. it would be very different. Sure. Yes. But no. we'll have nowhere else to go. No, it's been so, a topic, you. so and it'll come very soon, I hope. Any other discussion? Having a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, none. One absent. Motion carries. Information and discussion items. Item A, summer professional development. So uh, we have A and B are connected. Um, and so Heather's going to speak to A, uh, Alvina's going to speak to B and how, how it supports A. But also I wanted to kind of speak to something that uh, Trustee Clements spoke to about, about morale and, and helping people and, and creating a sense of community. Uh, we're going to be offering a number of different professional development opportunities for our staff. <clears throat> And in doing so, um, it's targeted to things people really wish that they knew more um, to help them develop in their craft. Uh, so again, this goes back to making sure that we're listening to our staff, um, addressing their needs as best we can. So I'd like to have uh, Director Sherburn come up and speak to the work that the team um, and other departments are going to provide this summer to support our teachers. So good evening again. We are excited to be able to offer um, a variety of really neat opportunities that will um, be available for transitional kindergarten through high school teachers, um, including general education as well as special education. So we'll get started with letting you know, although I think some of the dates have to be adjusted. After I just saw the new calendar, I went, I think the start date changed from when we first set the dates. <laughs> but um, so this first one that's up here is our Blended Learning Academy. And the reason we're calling it an academy is because this is going to be an ongoing professional development that will begin during the summer and go into the entire school year ending with the end of next school year. So uh, the vision for the Blended Learning Academy is that we will have two professional development days in June, and that will kick, kick it off to help these teachers understand all of the components that go into using um, technology in meaningful and powerful ways. So teachers that are accepted into this academy would be provided with a new Microsoft Surface device and the um, connectors in order to be able to present wirelessly. And the first two days would be teaching them how to use this device because it's a different um, tablet computer device than what they are typically used to. So once we teach that to them, they'll have summertime to continue to learn and play and get used to to the device. They'll come back then in um, the end of July or early August, and we will go into how to use the device now for technology instruction, and whether we're doing that through Canvas, part of our new um, adoption, should we go through with the ELA, ELD adoption, has a lot of technology components. We would be using those interfaces, looking at Google Classroom and other tools, and teaching these teachers in depth how to use blended learning and what blended learning is and how we bring the best of technology into the best of instructional design practices to create powerful learning environments for students. So then, after they've had those three full days, I mentioned that they would have ongoing professional development through the remainder of the year. Part of the commitment is, is that they would be meeting once per month after school. Wow. I didn't do it. I hit a button. I probably did it. I hit a button. I admit it. I hit Don't a button. Don't do that. I touched a button. I was trying to zoom in on the thing, and now I can't see it. 
I, I told you, put your hands in your lap. I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Heather. I We're not accepting you into the Blended Learning Academy. <laughs> I barely right. need a lot more work before I get to that stage. I think technically right. that would be technology integration, not blended learning. That's right. He was listening at our last session. Good job. So, um, so the teachers would come back and after school professional development once per month to have ongoing learning and collaboration time to continue to learn and refine their craft. Additionally, as part of that, they would agree to having um, four uh, our four coaches go out and observe them and help them with pre preparing lessons and give them feedback. This is non-evaluative at all. It's completely coaching um, in order to refine our implementation of blended learning. So right now we have um, planned for accepting 30 teachers into this academy. They will apply by application. Part of the application process is that they agree to all of these components. Um, and they understand what they're getting for that. They also um, agree to come to the, the after school sessions and the ongoing pieces and in return they'll get the, the Surface computer. They'll also share why they wanna be part of the Blended Learning Academy and what it means to them and how they envision using technology and what they see as powerful about technology. We anticipate we are going to have more than 30 people want to do it, which is exciting. Um, and, but we want to start with a really refined uh, model, get it out there, do it really well, and then we'll continue to build and expand from there. So that's our first exciting offering we have starting this summer. Then we are also planning ahead for the potential of having an ELA, ELD adoption coming forward. So in addition to the two professional development days that we would have for all of our teachers, um, K-8, to be looking at the new adoption and getting the training on it, we also hope to be able to um, get materials in time that we can do an upfront optional training for them where they can get the basic overview of the program and have time to continue to collaborate and work and get their teacher additions early um, so it'll be a combination of hands-on learning as well as time to plan and look at it and dig in with questions over those two days. So those dates, June 13th and 14th, are tentative based on um, whether or not we can get the materials in time. If not, we will look at readjusting the dates and making that optional but available to, to everyone. Um, then we're looking at doing an, another optional K-8 RCD Math 2.0 overview and planning time. So as I've mentioned in other presentations, we've talked about in-depth um, revision of the mathematical units that we have, um, kindergarten through eighth grade. So those units are being completely redesigned and redeveloped. The interfaces are a lot more powerful. Um, the instructional materials and methodologies will build on the mathematical practices and professional development that we've done already this year. But we want teachers to have time to learn those units, see the new structure that we've put in place, really dig in, have all of the tools that they need um, to understand those units, to be prepared to roll out into the next year and have time to actually start implementing it and dig in and explore. So we're planning to offer those um, on August 4th and 5th and those are the ones that I'm not sure now whether or not we're going to have to adjust. Um, next, we want to do another academy, a new teacher academy, though. Um, we have had a lot of new teachers here, and we did a small orientation. And what we're realizing is, especially with new adoptions coming forward, the number and volume of teachers that we're hiring because of the growth here in the district, um, and then all of the technology components that come into play, there are more things that we need to do to support new teachers. So we are going to open up the new teacher academy to all new, newly hired teachers. So it's not just new to the teaching profession, it's new to teaching in Lammersville Unified. And they will have two days um, at the beginning of the, the school year where we will go through all of the basic orientations and, and materials, get them up and running, their logins, everything that they need to do for the first month of school and be successful. Um, tell them, what is uh, Lammersville Unified? What do we believe in terms of technology and blended learning? What are uh, 
SMOs and how do we define how we implement those within Lammersville. And then we'll come back over the course of the year and we'll pr provide, and get again, just-in-time training. So Because you can only take on so much at one time. So in September, we start telling them more about making sure your grade book is exactly the way it needs to be and making sure that you understand um, how to uh, do any of the, the, the next steps within MAP and rolling the MAP testing over into uh, Compass and all of those other things that they would need. By October, then we can look at report cards and parent conferences and all of those pieces. After that, then we look at coming back for after school sessions so they can get some camaraderie and collaboration and other little pieces that come out through the year. So we see this full spectrum of support throughout the year. Um, so we're very excited to offer that academy to our teachers as well. And then working with um, Director Corona, she has uh, put together a couple trainings for the summer that she would like for her special ed teachers. Um, they would be having direct instruction training in June for three full days there where they'll learn uh, the strategies and techniques on particular curriculum to deliver specialized instruction for resource or um, special day class students. And then in August, coming back to um, go over more of the nuts and bolts of how to run an IEP meeting, what are the legal requirements, how do we stay in compliance, and all of those other very important topics that need to happen for our special education teachers. And I think that's it. I have one quick question. The uh, new teacher academy, that's in addition to those that need to be in BITSA? Right, so they would be able to be a part of BITSA, and what we would work on is giving them, um, I used to run BITSA, I was a BITSA director, and so the way that works is they have learning plans that they're working on, and so what we want to do is try and provide them with all of the support for the things that they know so they can continue to do the work that they need to do it with BITSA and act as a support to them. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a great idea. I just think it's a lot of meetings, especially for those teachers that are coming to us without experience. So right. Just, so Watch the, them from, from meeting meltdown. Yeah, so we'll want to look Hot. at that. A lot of the, the after school, though, as we come in, is really about helping them. So it's question and answer. What do you need? What do you need to know? So that you're not sitting there figuring it out at home in tears on your own. Been there, done that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's all about providing support. <coughs> Thank you. And I just, I just want to add a couple of things. You know, I've, I've, I've had people stop me and ask me, well, why isn't, teacher morale on the agenda? Why isn't teacher morale on the agenda? My response has always been, that's a nebulous concept. I would point out that three of the discussion items <laughs> on tonight's agenda are a direct or indirect response to the requests made to this board at the October meeting by the Lammersville Teachers Association. That three of the items discussed tonight are directly related to those concerns that were shared by those staff. And while teacher morale is not an agendized item, each one of those three items, including this last discussion, is a direct correlation and response to those issues. So I just want to make sure that that information is out there, that people understand that it is something we as a board, as Mr. Clements has pointed out, continue to address the best way we can by providing what they asked for, more resources, including additional staff training and professional development days, which, by the way, this was kind of buried within those folks. Those trainings were paid. These are not additional unpaid hours. We're making teachers come in on their own time to learn. It was not really highlighted in there. They're, Every they're, flyer had it on it. I looked for it. Exactly. Me too. <laughs> so they're paid time mm -hmm. for the teachers to come in and get this additional training, the additional support of those two staff members and the, and the request that we recruit and retain qualified teachers to fill positions rather than having temporary certificated staff in teaching positions. Every one of those topics was addressed in October and brought to us as a concern. And here we are five months later addressing every single one of those three and I appreciate that from all of our staff. Thank if you, you look much. at the, the posters, too, many of the Why? same exact things that were up there were, put, were listed on the posters as input from the teachers. And, in fact, we shared this information with LTA, and they thanked us wholeheartedly. They said, this is what we've been asking for. This is exactly what we want. And they're, they're very excited about that. That's Excellent. very good. Thank you. Thank you. Item B. So um, uh, the state has been generous to us, and Alvina is going to explain how the Educator Effectiveness Effectiveness Block Grant is going to help support that professional that some development. Some crazy acronym like EBEG or something. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so page 33 of the packet 
is the amount of funds that were allocated to be used over a three-year period. Um, it's very exciting. I, I'd love to hear all the, this that, that we typo. have to offer. Um, no, it's two hundred fifty-six thousand oh, dollars. Three years. I would love to have over, had that for oh, one for year. A like, oh, year. we could do so much. Yes, with that. yes. <laughs> but of course, as the state yeah. provides grant money, there's also rules. This will be an audit item. They will make sure that we discussed it in a public meeting. The plan. Um, in a subsequent meeting, we'll bring the expenditure plan. Um, we've already begun tying in the sources of funding, both to come from the Educator Effectiveness Block Grant as well as the ELD portion coming from supplemental funding. Um, I do not see that this professional development will um, encroach um, into any of the district general funds. So it's, it's very exciting that we have this money, but again, rules <coughs> will be audited. There'll be a, 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 a form that will have to be completed at the end that states how many teachers receive support, how many administrators receive support, paraprofessionals. So um, we have to keep track of it very carefully. It's good. It's good to have this. It is. Like I said, I just had hoped that eight was supposed to be a six and we got all $250,000 <laughs> in one year. I never know if more will come oh, man, my way in the future. You just wait to see what these folks can do with funds. a quarter of a million dollars. They're one-time funds, obviously, that they cannot are. be used for on ongoing purposes. And I do want to remind the board that the, those two are going to turn into four and um, and we're going to have coordinator services um, using um, some monies that we also have at one-time purposes to expand the staff of the Ed Services team. That'll be coming soon to a board meeting. Excellent. That's good, because we don't want to kill off our rock stars. No. no. <laughs> okay, so item C, Morgan Hill Concerned Parents Association v. California Department of Education. So Dr. Gill uh, drew the short straw, and so we want to thank her on our way up to the uh, podium. <laughs> I would have done this report. Um, there's a kerfuffle report. out there that we have nothing to do with, but um, it, it kind of started percolating through um, California. So I'm going to have uh, – information's already gone out, but I think it's important Dr. Gill, uh, with her short straw, explain it one last time in full picture. Thank you. Good evening, um, Governing Board and Dr. Nicholas. So sometimes when um, court cases happen, even if they happen at the state or federal level, once in a while they impact us at locally as well. And so this one um, came out of an association called Concerned Parents Association. Uh, in this specific case, it was Morgan Hills Concerned Parents and uh, the Concerned Parent Association. It's a nonprofit uh, association and uh, they filed a lawsuit against the state of California, basically the Department of Education, saying that uh, Department of Education, you are not doing a good job of overseeing um, students' needs, especially special education students. So what came out of that was a court case orders to the state of California, uh, to the Department of Education, saying you need to send information if it, somebody requests a nonprofit organization requests information regarding students. Um, uh, students who could be maybe special education students, students with dis disabilities, or students who might, whose parents might have requested an assessment or who might have been assessed. And specifically, students who were in school in January 2008. So that means if your child is actually 21 years old, you, you are, your, your, your child's information couldn't be given out as well. Uh, because even if they're beyond 18 years old, it still applies to those children as well, those students as well. So uh, court cases, uh, we're giving the link, even though we gave this information to the school sites already, they're communicating with the parents directly at the school sites. We want to make sure we give the parents more information. This link right there um, uh, will take the parents directly to the court case, all the details, uh, what had happened. Uh, San Jose Mercury News actually had a really good article, very simple language written as compared to the court case. Uh, that's why I gave both. Uh, so it, Mercury News is, makes more sense and very quick and easy read. And then um, I also want to point out that uh, a local school district like ours really directly wasn't involved in the lawsuit. We really directly has no, have nothing to do with it. And we have not been ordered by CDE. Uh, is, is, sorry, we have not been ordered by the code. CDE has been. So who has to turn the old uh, records over is CDE. CD is being told by the court that you need to provide all the records of students um, to a nonprofit organization in case they ask. The thing here is our records are with CDE. 
So our students' records, they have them. That's why we want to inform our parents that if a student was in the school system starting January 1, 2008, there's a potential that your child's record might be shared with a nonprofit organization. We also want to educate our parents that parents actually can say no. Parents don't have to allow their children's record to be shared uh, with, with anybody. So there are two different ways to do it, and I am going to stress that over and over. One of the ways, again, there, this is the link right there, is uh, they can either write a letter or they can complete a form. And uh, these links right there will take directly to the, par to the parents through the forms. We have, again, given, have given to the school sites to be shared through EduLinks, through newsletters, to the parents as well. And the form looks like this. Uh, it's a pretty simple, straightforward form that parents have to complete and it may have to mail it right there at the bottom um, address right there. It tells them exactly where to mail it. They are not accepting any forms online. Everything has to be mailed physically. Um, or the parents can write a letter. A letter has to include all of this information. Um, and I do want to stress that along with including all this information, which is student's name, um, the parent's name, what their relationship is to the student, the child's date of birth, county, school district, school, all those kind of things, and also why are they object objecting. They do have to write down the disclaimer, which is right here. Uh, only then they will actually put it in that mail. Uh, that will actually go to the judge. Um, so it is very, very important that parents write on that letter, on the first page of the letter, that to be filed under seal and objection to disclosure of student information and records, case number exactly how it's written. So uh, very important wanna, to do that. I, I want to provide some clarification there, Kush, to, so that folks understand. Either way, the judge is going to get your letter. What happens is if you don't put that language on there, your letter then becomes a permanent part of the court's case file and can be then accessed by any member of the public. So that means if you're trying to get your students' information to be confidential and you write a letter, you've actually put it into the court file if okay. you don't include this information. It is no joke. I would recommend you use the form rather than the letter because if you even make one typo in the court case, it becomes part of the public record forever. That's correct. And you have to make a motion to the court to then take that back out, redact it, and reseal it at your expense. I, I, I would strongly urge anyone to use the other form rather than this route just to be safe. We are going to have copies of the forms uh, available in the front office here as well. We will also provide copies on the counters at the school sites as well. We want to make it as convenient for the parents as possible so that all they have to do is complete the form, put it in the mail. Uh, again, I really want to stress the April 1st date. That is the most important thing. Uh, uh, the, uh, so parents, March month is the month to uh, fill those forms and send them in the mail. I'd like to make a point, because I'm involved in this also. This is not an opt-out. There is no opt-out. This is an objection. Then you get parents are getting their opinion on file with the judge. There is no opt-out right now. Nope. And there was something happened just the other day, and I can't remember what it was. I think that the judge said publicly there's no opt-out to this right now. So parents need to know that. This is just an objection. And And... If I if my read of the court case is correct, and objecting doesn't mean that your child's information won't go. Correct. It means that you've informed the judge that you object, and the judge will take it under advisement. Correct. The idea is if we can get enough objections, the judge yeah. may decide to seal that part of the record so that at least it's not public for everyone. But I'm going to guarantee you the judge is going to see it, the attorneys are going to see it, and the parties on both sides are going to see it. They're going to get this information. The advice we are, we are given is more parents send this form in, uh, more effective it will be. Hmm. So yeah, it is we a good want, idea for parents yeah. to file yeah. the objection, but they do need to understand that it's not an opt out and right that now. That it's also not that it's something that apparently well-meaning parents created. So there are other parents out there who want the judge to have your child's confidential information. So I I think. If it's me, I've already reached out to the Morgan Hill folks to let them know that my child's information is none of their blankety business. Um, I would ask if it's entirely possible and we're not violating any rules to put the link on our main page, yeah. on our Facebook page, to this form. I'd like it to be everywhere. Just to give the, like you said, there's two ways to do it. We're trying to get it everywhere we can. I'd like it to truly be everywhere we can. It's Presently, where is it located? 
It, it is on our website. Is it on the main page? Because I didn't see it on the main page. I'd like it's to put it up front, like an announcement page. from the school district. Yeah, hey. it's not on the main page, but we can we can add it on the main page. It's, it's under the special education. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd rather just again we'll for folks who page. don't want to navigate, put it on the main mm -hmm. page. Put a link yes. to it on our Facebook. Just saying, if you want to object, please here's yes. the and form. because of the time. I mean, April one is the drop dead date. Because of the time criticality, if I could use that word. I noticed that Heather Corman and James Yeager have already sent out emails informing um, the parents of the children in their school. Uh, in their school, um, I want to make sure that we send it out to. We we actually everyone. high school has already sent it to Bethany has sent it, mm -hmm. um, Wickland has sent it, Lammersville is the only one that I didn't check if they have, but I know everybody else has already sent it. Okay. But got, we are following up with daughter. Lammersville. I didn't as get well. it to my board address, but I got it to my. Oh, okay. So, All right. And I think right. there's a lot of confusion out there about this, and I, the, this presentation, the PowerPoint, would be a good thing to put on the website also. I Definitely. That. That's yeah. the plan. Yes. Can you Thank clarify you. the April 1 date? Is that postmarked by or received by the court by? Um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. It just says... Timely <laughs> mailed is timely file, right? No. We would like, we will encourage parents not to wait until well, April 1st. I'm asking the court can make it a five-day rule. Yeah. The court can do whatever it wants exactly to. Exactly correct. So if it's received, and, and it's a federal court, so I can't tell you the rules because I don't do a whole lot in federal court, but no, if, if April 1 is received by timely mailed, it's not timely filed. It's it's not like your taxes. You have to have it okay. to the court by April 1. I would, yeah. not, I would not miss it. That's around. a good question. We can, we can definitely find the answer, but I'm going to encourage parents to think 25th of March instead of April 1st. I would agree. Yes. So just, just be ahead. If you're going to file the form, it's going to take maybe five minutes to complete it. And again, we're going to have copies available, hard copies, at our, our front desk and at the school sites as well, on their counters as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. And on to the calendar. There's some events there listed. We do have a gate community meeting tomorrow night. For those of who, you who wanted to see me more, feel free to come on by to that one. <laughs> and also a, a facilities meeting. I don't see it on here, but it's next Tuesday. Um, and again, if you want to see me or Mr. Strzok and or Mr. Pombo at that meeting, we'll be there for that as well. The DLAC committee meeting and wellness committee meeting are on the 9th. Relay recess at all the sites on the 4th and the full scale safety activity on the 16th, safety meeting on the 16th and our next governing board meeting all on the 16th. So if you're bored, you can have a fun day with Lammersville all day on the 16th. <laughs> and with that, can I have a motion? I'll move for... Um Adjournment to closed session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, folks.